Here we are at the first bull market dip above the all-time highs on Bitcoin, or at least we hope it's the first dip and not the end of the rodeo. And we are going to look at cryptocurrencies that I am buying during this dip. It's a highly requested video that you guys mentioned on one of the polls I had recently on the channel. So I thought now's a fantastic time to make that video as I have just been buying some cryptocurrencies, which we're going to dive into. Thanks for joining me again on the channel if you're a returning viewer. If you're new to the channel, thank you as well for joining us. Remember to hit the subscribe button down below, bell notification icon because YouTube has a way of shadow banning cryptocurrency content at the most critical times. You wait until that next top comes in or that final top, they do it. Let's take a look at the cryptos and first dive into the agenda. So today's agenda, top altcoins on buying during the Bitcoin crash 2021, risky strategies to increase our Bitcoin position. This is risky. If you're not in for risk, you don't have time in your day, I do not recommend any of this, nor do I recommend anything on the channel because I'm not a financial advisor, nor am I a solicitor. You do your own research. I'm just sharing what I'm doing because it's what I'm doing during the day and I find it interesting to be able to share it. Next thing. Number one, review our top altcoins using charts and technical analysis. Next, why I prefer technicals over fundamentals for large caps on these buying opportunities. Also, how I group the cryptos into sectors and why, so I'm looking at risk there, which cryptos are in which sectors, and that's just gonna be with the top 10 or so that we're looking at today. Number five, how do I get the funds to buy the dip if I was fully invested already? That's often a big question that comes up. People wanna know where the top is so they can sell it and buy back at the exact low. It's impossible. If anyone is telling you they can do it, it's basically impossible. Even the best traders of all time do not claim to have done that consistently. Same goes for anyone that is giving exact calls and believe that's where the price is going to end up. Even the best traders, mutual fund managers, hedge fund managers, all of the managers that manage billions of dollars do not claim to do that on a consistent basis. They know it's nonsense. Next up, my portfolio breakdown for each of these cryptocurrency sectors. Seven, exit strategy, always a good one. And number eight, where am I buying these cryptos from? Uh, wallet, staking, all those sort of nitty gritty questions which uh, a lot of you are asking, which is a great thing. All right, so if you do find some value from the video, let us know, hit the like button down below, share your comments, concerns, questions in the comments section, and be sure to use only the links in the description as everything else is full of scammers in that area. Unfortunately, that's the way it's going at the moment. So let's start with a review of our top altcoins. So the top altcoins I have here are grouped into the sectors, just as I mentioned in the agenda, safe, crypto. We all know cryptos are pretty volatile and they're not proven to stay long term yet. Maybe. I've got ETH in there and now I'm only going to include ETH and Bitcoin in that safe crypto area. Large caps, DOT, CRO, BAND, SOSO, LINK, UNI, again, and uh, Wi-Fi. So BAND is the lowest out of those large caps I have there, but I think it's going to really boost its way up into the rankings. That's why I've got it into the large caps, although we could call it a, definitely call it a small cap. But DOT's in the billions, CRO in the billions, LINK in the billions, UNI, billion, two billion, sometimes below, Wi-Fi, similar sort of thing. Now the micro caps, the super risky stuff, uh, Poles, which is Poker Starter, Injective Protocol, and API3. Now, the sectors I have here basically based on market caps so that's how i'm grouping them and then i'll consider them safe or not safe and on top of that the time they've been around now ethereum has been around a long time so it just adds to that extra level of safety and it's proved itself it's still in the top and it looks like it's going to come through and break its all-time high which is a pretty spectacular thing to do for such an old uh, cryptocurrency so these are where the sectors are broken down uh, I'm not breaking them down into the type of company they are. Like we could go through DeFi or smart contracts or decentralized exchanges, you know, to be more specific, but I'm going to group them in market caps because at the end of the day, I think most of these projects in the cryptocurrency space are going to fail. And so I'm interested in one, do they have the hype to get them really far up into the rankings and give us those massive multiples that we're looking for? And two, 
are they at a lower market cap but have that strength in them, that strength behind them to get us there? And so overall, I like TA for the safe cryptos and the big market caps uh, over fundamental analysis. Basically, the main reason is you can have all the fantastic fundamental analysis in the world, but if it's the wrong time to buy, it's going to be the wrong time to buy. None of that fundamental analysis is going to matter at that point when you need to buy. So the fundamentals are great to get an understanding of the company, but the technicals are gonna give us a better insight as to when the timing is right or better to be able to get into these cryptos. Now that's my theory that I use throughout cryptocurrency, throughout stocks, just it doesn't really matter about the fundamentals when it comes time to actually pulling the trigger. You need to do that research to build up the knowledge base and have the confidence in the business or crypto, whatever it is that you're buying. But come time to pull that trigger, let's see what the chart's doing. Is it trending up, trending down or sideways? And is there some bias to either direction? So we've covered the first one, review of our top altcoins. We're gonna look at technical analysis in a moment. Number two, why I prefer TA over FA for large cap buying opportunities. Number three, how I group cryptos into sectors and why basically it's the risk. I wanna be able to get a good return on my Bitcoin that I'm risking because at the end of the day, maybe it was just better to just buy Bitcoin and forget about wasting my time with all of these trades. So I'm focusing on that risk as well. Number four, which cryptos are in which sectors? And this is just a different sector that I've broken down. It's just market caps, really. It's not the sector of the niche that those cryptos are in. So how did I get the funds to buy the dip? USDT and AUD. I had some of that sitting in my account, but I was fully invested. I was fully invested at the time that I was happy with because I've been buying since 2018, 19 through those lows. And that was the amount that I was happy with buying. Don't put all of that amount into the market so that when these dips do come, I've got another opportunity to buy. Now, if we didn't have that money in the account, just saying if I was in that position where I didn't, the other thing I did here was I sold some old shit coins that pumped. I had some old bags from 2017. I saw it pump a few days ago. The feeling was similar to those pumps in 2017. Uh, the chart showed a big blow off top and I just thought I gotta get the hell out of this. This is the example engine. I think it's a great project. I still hold a fair chunk of that from one of my portfolios. Uh, the recommendation for engine was from a friend. Lesson, always do your goddamn research. Do it yourself. Don't trust anything online. Use it as ideas and then go and dig a little bit deeper. Uh, the friend knows what he's doing. He does fantastically well in his portfolio, but he doesn't use anything with technical analysis. He just understands the companies, talks to the CEOs, uh, gets on board. Like he, he, He's been around in the space a very long time. This will probably take off at some point, engine. That's why I'm still keeping a bag. But it just didn't look like it was going to survive against the Bitcoin value. And that's what I'm concerned about. So I sold off a good chunk of that. And that gave me more into the my, my USDT and AUD as well. So that allowed me to then go out and buy a little bit into some of these other altcoins. You might be wondering, well, that's great that you did that, but I can't do it. And it's like, well, yes, you can. You just need to be prepared for next time if you are finding yourself asking that question and planning to type something in the comments. I didn't do this the first time around. I had to learn the, the hard way and now I have to implement it. So even if engine did burst up again and I didn't get that gain, I have to take that chance that it wouldn't have burst up and take the profits when they're there. So now let's have a look at the charts and we'll start from the top and move our way down and then I'll move into the portfolio allocation. Ethereum, always a good one. I still think there's huge potential to beat Bitcoin in its Bitcoin value. And that's just essentially because we're at 3% of the Bitcoin value now. If we get double that, that's great. It's double the Bitcoin that I had before going into this bull market. And that's all just from a safe cryptocurrency investment like Ethereum. Probably on these dips, I'm going to be buying more Ethereum than I would Bitcoin. To be honest, I probably won't buy any more Bitcoin, it'll be mostly Ethereum and those other cryptocurrencies. And then I'll be scaling out of my Bitcoin positions, my Ethereum positions, and getting rid of all of those shit coins. They will dump, I've said that many times before, and the little saying that I got from a friend is don't marry your shit coins hit it and quit it. Now for the rest of these altcoins, I'll make one note for the majority of them. What I noticed after the dump on Bitcoin on around the 11th of January, which is this day here, 
they all still, majority of them, held up reasonably well. So even though it was a scare, technically speaking, on the chart, it just looked like a quick flash crash and that they would recover. It didn't look like they were about to fall into a bear market. So that's given me more confidence to believe that Bitcoin will pass its high again. And like I've said in other videos, I think it might be about a one to three months that we hang out underneath the high that it's just put in. If you can't stomach one to three months without making any gains or seeing your account go against you in that period, then this game's probably not for you because that's the way it happens. I could be completely wrong, it could just burst straight up from here, but it would be lovely to see it at least one to three months so that we can bring some more energy to the market rather than just go straight up. Going straight up is very scary and it doesn't sustain a long bull market. And in, if that's the case, then we're definitely out. But if we can take our time and go up, take a few months, that's even better for a bigger move further up the, the ladder there. So with that said, DOT looks like it's in a great position. Huge volume, bursts through its highs. The hype is still there for DOT. It's come back. This is a beautiful swing setup. You want to see that go up and come back retest these levels briefly on high volume, closed higher. Even if it came back down, set on, that's fine. You know, I go on about this all the time with the technical analysis that I do on the channel. This is a great setup. If it fails, it's in huge trouble, but I don't see it failing at this point. I think the supply had dried up at this level of four to five dollars. You can see the volume dropping off as the market is lowering and then a quick burst out of it on high volume. So all of these little indicators are just check boxes in my toolbox to say DOT is very strong. And so I'd rather go heavier on DOT than some of the small cap stuff, which is still unproven. So moving on from DOT, CROs had a massively hard time after that high and uh, a lot of people were buying into it. We know the story there, at least a lot of people do. It was a 20% return you would get on your CRO if you were staking it in crypto.com. They changed the terms and it just dumped the hell out of there. Now, I think this may be a bottom forming, bottom setting up. It looks like it is, but it can still fail from this point. With that said, I'm happy to go in and purchase a little bit more of this because it's already a reasonable size of my portfolio. And I'll talk about that in just a sec because I have multiple portfolios. After crypto.com, we had band, huge volume on the way up, nice little swing back. It looks great for a setup. It didn't crash so hard on those crash days. So that's what I'm checking on a lot of these charts is what happened on the 11th. Against Bitcoin, dropped a tiny bit, not much. The structure still looks beautiful. It broke out of the downtrend on huge volume. I think band has got a long way to go. It's had a massive fall from its highs after the DeFi craziness. So I think this could be a great area to accumulate more. Even if it does drop a little bit lower, I'll still be purchasing in there. That's fine. Band then leads me on to Link because it looks like it's in a similar position on the Bitcoin chart. But as for the USD, it's, it's well and truly up there. I'd much rather be buying it down at these levels because maybe I have the potential to be increasing my Bitcoin as we move into the rest of this bull market. The only question is, will it continue to fall against this Bitcoin value while it rises in USD as Bitcoin rises? We'll wait and see. But I've got alerts set up here above and below this potential accumulation area. So I'm taking the gamble. As I said, this is a very risky strategy and buying into some more link. Quick look at uni on the dollar chart, looks very similar to dot. You can see that set up, it was accumulating, broke out, we've come back and tested it and potentially gonna go higher. So that's again, what we're waiting for. You can see I had the trade here. We've talked about this in the previous video, but that's one of the top alts that I'm looking at because I like this setup of lowering volume as the market was trying to drop. Basically, it seems like supply has dried up and we all know what happens when there's a supply sh shortage. Price goes up if people are willing to buy more. So that's what I think's happened here. And now we're just having a bit of a pull back while we wait for the market to recover. Quick look at the Bitcoin chart. That's looking pretty good too. You can see it's like the band setup where we had a big fall into the lows, nice strong volume out and the low is getting higher. Not much happened on the 11th another safe looking chart in my opinion of course again remember keep looking at the 11th because that was the catalyst scary day for bitcoin and what happened to the rest of the cryptos that's a good indicator for strength or weakness last one on our major caps is wi-fi looks like a very similar pattern so i'm not going to bore you with going over and over it again higher low higher low potentially another higher low huge volume breaking out 
of this trend. This gets boring and that is good because it's easier to see these things. It shouldn't be emotional. It should be nice and boring, plain Jane, make your trade, move on. Don't get emotional about it and hyped up. Now onto the smaller caps, the more riskier stuff. Let's start with poles. And as you can see, that's a nice trend up there. I got in a little bit up here around 95 to a dollar. It's come back to 90. So another great re-entry. It's broken through the old high that it had when it was first released in October. That's a good thing. Uh, we're still seeing some good volume. Ranges are moving up there. This is looking good. Next thing we had was injective protocol. Still a good setup. It's broken through the highs. If we can hold above there and close, even better. But again, we've just moved up and up and up. This looks like it was reaccumulation before we start to move again. Now the fundamentals on this as well are fantastic. Like I said earlier, the main thing I'm looking for with these really small caps is that they have the hype behind them. They have a use case that people can get their heads around in order to invest in it. So that's a great thing. And that the chart looks reasonably good. We're in an uptrend and we're breaking through the highs. It's not too difficult for the coin to keep going. We don't want to see a whole lot of resistance above. Now, the last crypto on my list is API3. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. This one is looking a little sadder than the others, but it could be at an accumulation zone at the lows here based on the high volume that we saw on the 11th, which is our catalyst day, and the closing prices afterwards are higher. So that is still looking pretty strong looks like it was a double bottom with the low so we definitely want to see this thing punch out of here sooner rather than later otherwise that double bottom means it's failed if it comes back breaks it it's failed and it's going to go a lot lower why i think some of the fundamentals are good this may come down to be one of those projects that is a chain link killer which we know from 2017 ethereum had a lot of ethereum killers and those things were hyped up even if they didn't produce anything. So I'm taking my gamble on API3, another extremely low cap cryptocurrency to be the chain link killer. And I'm basically hoping on that overall that that's gonna boost this crypto up into those rankings and give us that almighty Bitcoin value. So a couple more things to go through are my portfolio breakdown for each of these cryptos, nice and simple. Exit strategy, another one, very simple and I'll elaborate on this in future videos as well and uh, continue to follow this as the market progresses and then where am I buying, buying these cryptos from so number six portfolio breakdown super simple as I said save cryptos BTC and ETH about 30 to 40 percent large caps they are the next lot the the links bands uni Wi-Fi about five to ten percent and of course these are going to fluctuate as the market moves and then those micro caps I'm happy with just one to two percent uh, if I wanted to be a degenerate, sure, I would put more of my Bitcoin and Ethereum into them, but I'm not in the position where I need to be a degenerate, so I'm just keeping it nice and simple. Now, I'll make one other mention to that. I keep separate portfolios. I have a portfolio which is just Bitcoin and Ethereum, because at the end of the day, I see these two as going the furthest, and they're going to be the safest. So I'd rather keep my money in the, the gold and the silver, and then play around with a little bit in the other caps. With that said, I still have one portfolio which has a little Bitcoin and Ethereum in it so that I can play with that and move it into some of the large cap stuff and the micro caps. So within that portfolio, I may have eight or nine large caps and then break down the other micro caps to be about five or so of those. So if I have eight large caps at 10%, that leaves me another 20% to go and be a degenerate with the micro caps. So they're all going to fluctuate. That's, that's about how I break it up. Uh, that's for my percentage of my portfolio. Quickly onto the exit strategy, technical analysis. That's why I do it every day on the channel. I watch it. I want to be sure that I'm in tune with the market just as much as I know what I'm looking at on the chart. And then I have a target for a lot of the degenerate stuff to be at around five to 10 X from where it is. With that said, if it looks like it's going against me, I've learned my lesson. I've been burnt. So I just need to sell out of that crap and move on from that point. Potentially I will sell half get some of that money back get some of the profits and then see where the other half rides otherwise if i'm done with it i'm over it sell it all move on to something else i don't care if it goes up 100x i've got my stash that i wanted and i move on i leave the other dirt crap for someone else and lastly where am i buying these cryptocurrencies from a lot of them i can get on swiftx so i'm buying them here because there's a huge range of cryptocurrencies on this exchange. Now this one's an Aussie exchange and I do have a link to this in the description. Don't touch anything in the comments section. 
And for the overseas guys, I also have a link to Binance. There's a link in the description for Binance and you can pretty much purchase a lot of these on there, if not all of them. The only one I'm having troubles with is API 3 and I have to get that one on Poloniex. So a SwiftX, great option for Aussie crypto traders and investors. Check this one out, there's a link in the description for that. $10 a free Bitcoin when you verify your account. Now storing them, small stuff, up to you. Big stuff, definitely keep it safe. Crypto.com wallet app is something that I use because it's easy to use during the day and I can get staking rewards on several of those cryptocurrencies that we have looked at today. Plus, I also stake them on Binance as well. So that gives me another five to 15% per annum just seeing them on those platforms and, and locking them up for 15 to 30 days or even as a flexible option there as well. So that was a mighty long video looking at my top altcoins that I'm buying during this Bitcoin crash correction. Remember, it is a risky strategy. I'm following this daily and it's something that I can keep track of myself. If you're in that position, don't just trust someone on the internet. Make sure you have a plan that you can actually maintain and follow yourself. If you want to subscribe to the channel down below here, give us a like, it goes a long way to helping out the channel. And remember to hit the bell notification icon as well. That will notify you when I have these videos popping up in your newsfeed. Thank you once again, guys, for joining me on another video. Let's get the channel to 50,000 subscribers. Basically about to hit 40 in the next couple of days. Thank you so much. Let's get it to 50,000 and I'll catch you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done. Peace out.